Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. You know, one of the things, um, I guess, and I, I've noticed this since since March, um, when it comes to dynamite, is that the, um, I mean, there's actually a couple things about dynamite that I want to talk about, but, but um, the one thing is, is that the um, the male 18 to 34, when when you started, um, to me, that was like a really strong demo. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the first demo you beat Raw in probably was that on a, I wouldn't say an every week basis, but but fairly often. I mean, Raw was down, you were on the ascent, and you know it was always like, which domino is gonna fall first? And it was males 18 to 34, you were getting a young audience. You were the hot thing at the time. And now it's definitely gone in the other direction in the sense that WWE has gotten really strong. I mean, with, with men. And your male 18 to 34 has, has been the weak point. I mean, when people look at the drop in in um, ratings on on uh, Wednesday night, um, you know, and they'll just go, "Oh, you're doing terrible, you're doing terrible." And I'll look at like each thing, and it's like, it's really, you know, like um, male thirty five to forty nine had a couple of bad ones, but usually it's it's pretty much where I would expect. But the male eighteen thirty four, even this week, um, when everything was up, it was still down. It, it's been a problem um, thing, and and you know, part. I mean, I'm part of it is probably people shifting. There's you know to the other side, but. What do you think when you look at that? Because I think that's an important one because it's like the hot, you know, it's it's still going to be, generally speaking, you know, a wrestling show is still going to be 60 to 70 percent male viewers. It's always going to be more ma males than females, except for, you know, there's probably some promotions historically where that wasn't the case, but very few. So it's kind of like that's an important thing, um, for, and so especially for television, because they're so hard to reach. You know, I mean, I know that like most TV shows would die for your male 18 to 34 demo number, but it has, right. you know, it has. That's the, and that's the important thing to look at. That's the perspective. The, the last thing I would I would really stress what you said yeah. is most shows would kill for our 18 to 34 yeah, they demo. Would. They, would. And, they would. And I want to continue, you know, building. I think that uh, having MJF back in recent weeks is going to be very good. Uh, John Moxley, you know, I'm excited about the summer schedule he's defending the iwgp world title but i have a lot of dates on john moxley in the summer uh hopefully as the iwgp world champion he's not in the g1 and i think that works out really really well for us because mox is somebody who's moved the, the needle a big time and then of course we have other great stars like kenny omega uh is a great example we talked about adam cole uh, hangman a lot of people that I want to get back into the show that historically have been really big draws to that young number. And a lot of the people you're talking about, they're still here. They just haven't been on the show as much. You know, MJF just wrestled his first match back last week, you know, the week before, uh, you know, 10 days ago, I guess, from, from right now. And I think MJF being back is a major needle mover for us. And the fact he wasn't on the show at all until these past couple of weeks, it's, you know, I think not been ideal and we really want to get him going and like i said uh mox has spent a lot of time traveling wrestling in japan i really want to have mox here as ideally as the iwgp world champion but also uh defending it fighting in AEW. and then uh you know like i had mentioned to you uh i think the most important key point is that for us we've had historically really strong numbers and maintain really really strong numbers in tv and that is the thing we need to do is keep doing what we're doing because the numbers we have are numbers people in TV would kill to have. And I really need to focus on doing good shows for AEW, not about what competition is doing. I think that in this case, our competition going out ahead of us and getting good meteorites deals was a positive for us and actually uh, is good for us because we have very good historical comps. And these comps you know are very favorable for us so that's one thing i've done is a ton of market research and retain top analysts and data scientists and in looking at this stuff the last thing you said is really the key thing dave that most tv shows would kill for our ratings and demos and in sports we skew really young and uh you know instead of focusing on hey you know when kenny omega and mjf and Adam Cole were on the show every week, in addition to uh, all these other wrestlers, and Mox was here every week, and everything was running perfect, then, yes, like, we've had these demos that are, you know, even better 
than what you know what we've had. But yet right now we maintain some of the best demos in sports. So I really do think it's important to focus on that because I think it's going to be a really, really good summer for us. And we had really good growth through last summer too. And, you know, getting back to the best of what AEW does is really important to me. And historically, I think we've done a lot of that in the summer. You know, look at 2021, which is considered our best year. There was a pattern there too, where we had moved around a lot with the playoffs, you know, stuff that sounds familiar now. And uh, people were kind of ready for us to, to pick up and get some steam going into the summer in 21. And that's really what happened because there it's remembered as maybe the, in many ways, some of our strongest business yet most of our strongest business has happened in the past year. Our biggest live event, our biggest international growth, uh, two of our three biggest pay-per-views and we continue to grow that business and the demos are really, really good for us. And I think there's a really very positive story to be told that's really going to benefit us in the media rights negotiations, but also something that, you know, we can hang our hat on what we've done. And if you look, 2021 is a great example where the year got much hotter when we resumed live touring and the show picked up. And I think we have a lot of really exciting things. It's not going to be uh, as dramatic a change in the show as, you know, when we res went from Daily's Place to resuming live touring. But I do think Historically, the summer, just like last year, also is a good example. Uh, we've seen things kind of heat up, and I'm excited about what we have cooking and some of the things we have up our sleeve going into this pay-per-view. So obviously, so, the uh, the main event of the show is one of the main events. Obviously, is Swerve and Osprey for the AW title, and then you've also simultaneously got the Owen Hart Cup going on, and the winner of the men's and women's are getting title shots at Wembley. And you've got the Tony Storm match as well. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question is, when you've got like an Owen Hart tournament and you've also got a pay-per-view coming up and then you've got a big show coming, it's it's one of the fun things for fans is, okay, who do we think is going to win the tournament? Who do we think is going to win these title matches? How do we think they're going to get to Wembley? What are the big matches at Wembley? And it's fun for fans to fantasy book. And as a promoter, I would think that that's what you want to do is make it fun for fans to fantasy book where they think things are going. Are there ever times where you feel that, you know, as fun as this is, the fans have now convinced themselves of a certain outcome, and it is frustrating to you as a promoter to see, I guess, how certain people are of particular outcomes? It's interesting. I am... Within the wrestling business, as far as promoters, matchmakers, and executives go, I am probably far more sympathetic or far more in tune, like agree with the fan. If that's what they really want to see, then I should listen. So there's absolutely been times where I might have had an idea and then listening to the fan feedback, hearing what people really want to see, that's important. Now, I think there's a lot of different ways to get feedback from fans. Obviously, social media, you know, there's... Uh, I can hear in the arenas live every week at the shows. And I think that's a really important response point too, because there's absolutely been people that got reactions in the arena that made you take notice and, and think that, wow, this is really working. Cause I want everyone to get a good reaction. I'd like everybody to do well, but some people get more over than others in the same spots out of similar opportunities. And I'm really, really excited about what we have right now because we do have a really really good group of wrestlers and we have a lot of really good stories going into this pay-per-view you mentioned some of the matches that i'm excited about uh you know with timeless tony storm mina shirakawa has come in and done fantastic for us and uh, that's a great relationship that's one of the things we haven't today talked much about but i've spent a lot of time this week talking about it is adding stardom as a great partner for us this year it's been really good it's been great for our wrestlers to have now an outlet where they'll be able to go. We've seen Willow Nightingale go over and defend the TBS title in stardom. And I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities in the future for the AEW wrestlers to go get that experience and compete for stardom, but also top stardom wrestlers to come here. And that's something I'm really excited about. Uh, our women's division was really growing. And I think timeless Tony Storm is one of our great stars and I love working with her and I'm really proud of everything she's doing and I think she's phenomenal and we've got this great world champion and everything that's been happening with her and 
her protege, Mariah May. It's made for great TV for months now. And now Mina Shirakawa coming into the story. It's a, it's really cool because I think um, for people who do watch the shows and like AEW or, or give the show a chance and follow the shows, I think it's been really fun and entertaining. And I'm a big fan of all three women, Tony Storm, Mariah May, and Mina Shirakawa. And I think it's been a great way to introduce an international wrestler, somebody from stardom, a wrestler from Japan, into America, into our TV audience that might not have been familiar with her. And Mina gets big pops and has done really well for the show, in my opinion. And I think she would be a great AEW Women's World Champion. And it would be something that could really strengthen the relationship with stardom. So I'm really excited about that match. And it's a great example of the kind of cool stuff we have tomorrow on the pay-per-view. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.